Richard Roger for the Tall Blacks. Takes a sit down to start the game. Straight away, New Zealand go to the guards. They see that may be an advantage for them. They've got the smaller players that neither England or Australia have. Bezant. Australia doesn't have the athleticism of England, but they've got the finishing skill. And you can't get past Dan Johnson. Strong move from Ty Winnard. Drawing the foul. Well, they've called a turnover. Ball goes back to Australia. Straight away substitution. Wagstaff in the bet game right away. Roger. Both teams subbing thick and fast. Winyard got to finish though. Not going to get any out. That's a nice move. Well, we always say the referees, it's never debatable. So the referee makes the call. But that's uh, that step through the runner. And another day that may not have been called a travel, but it's a turnover today. Conversations off the bench. Two substitutes just having a conversation. We'll turn over there, call from Greg Hyatt, losing the control, Besant and Roger. This smaller lineup for New Zealand, it took them a while to figure it out against England, but it's showing up. It was no fluke as they're holding the Australians one to one so far. Don Poto tried to get in the paint. Roger with the shot. The thing is to truly exploit it though, they've got to make two point shots because Australia will just start getting the ball inside and there's no way to stop them. Wagstaff against Roger, that is a complete mismatch. Mouse in the house, as they say, on the field to play. Doesn't miss that one. Come on, Poto does that so well and gets a bit of extra as he goes through the scoring process. Johnson. Well, come on, Poto. Might not have the vertical athleticism, but he's got the strength, that low centre of gravity. There's a very famous New Zealand basketball player called Perro Cameron, used to play over here. It's very similar build, almost unstoppable once they get inside. And the same can be said of Ty Wynyard. Now, what you're seeing here with this New Zealand team against Australia, obviously they're fired up because it's New Zealand versus Australia but they're confident early on. By the time they figured out they could play with England, they were down by 10 points. Right now, they've got the edge. So Australia, real challenge. Their hands are full. Right, spins it out. Wagstaff, Kelman Poto, standing strong and deep. Whistle though on the plate. And there you see Kelman Poto just using his strength to take the space. Someone said to me once, I had like 3,000 rebounds in my professional career, and they said I'm going to jump for two of them. That's how you do it. Just take the space, let the ball come to you. Pick down 15 rebounds back in, mate. Oh, nice move by Wynn. You've got to convert it, though. Right. Drive from Johnson one way, the other oh. way puts it down, ties it at threes. Besson cuts into the paint, up glass, Calvin Poto finishing off for him. Well, how quick is this game? This is electric as we had yesterday. And I say this, this is Dan Johnson. It's the first time I've watched in the running game somebody who is built for 3x3. That style of attack wouldn't necessarily work in the five-on-five -five game. You've got help defenses, zones, double teams. That here, one-on-one, -on -one, quick as you like, slash through. He is an absolute monster. Greg Hyde will get free throws. He's fouled that time attacking the basket. And you know we're talking about the lights changing the atmosphere and how much more electric is. The fans are much more intense. That breeze is making it very difficult to get two-point shots. That's a tough move. That is what the guards, Richard Roger and Jaden Besant give Australia. I mean New Zealand. But what do you do about Dan Johnson? Daniel to his friends. You go to Ty <laughs> Wynyard and draw the foul. It's, it's Daniel to his mother. As a Daniel who goes by Dan, it's Daniel to your mother. Trust me, if and you're only, in trouble, it's Daniel. I was about to say, and only when you're in trouble, yeah, right? Yeah, always, always. My children will tell you, because I've got four of them, I give them numbers, <laughs> then I could never get the name wrong. 
Son number one, son number two, son number three, and there's only one daughter. <laughs> so it's the golden girl, Jess. Wagstaff finds Johnson outside the out, pops into Wagstaff, oh, just clipping the corner. So Come we, back to Kelvin Poto. Remember where we watched New Zealand, Australia this in the earlier session, and they seem almost unstoppable. They've got their hands full, you know, as, as good as Australia look. Look at the scoreboard. They are behind. Roger, good D from right that time. Australia making the most of their smaller player that they've got in Tom Wright. Breaking up the play, and then a foul committed inside. Kalman Poto. Such a close start to this one. Australia 5, New Zealand 6, 6.51 left in the game. The if you're hands. new to 3x3, just a 10-minute match, or first to 21. Yeah, and then we get that first TV timeout. First time a dead ball under seven minutes. The referee stops the game for 30 seconds for a timeout. And to put some perspective on this, a five-on-five -five traditional basketball format, it's 40 minutes, four times 10-minute quarters. So if you think about it in this, this is so intense. Two and a half minutes of 3x3 is like watching 10 minutes of a five-on-five -five full court game. Street ball at its best. Johnson puts it up. The whistle goes higher, finds his way back onto his feet. Roger not happy with that call. Foul called on Richard Roger. You notice as well, just underneath the hoop. 12 second shot clock. I'll tell you. Johnson doesn't need any more than about half a second to get that off. And see his adaptable game. He's in a five on five game, he, he's a he's a, 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 a halfway between a small forward and a power forward. But in here against Ty Winyard, he's got he's got the advantage because he can step out deep and Winyard does not want to come out there. Now, just a note here, the whistle went about five seconds after this went, Bezant just testing his range and he made it. Basket didn't count, but Bezant was just wanting to have a go at the two-point efforts. And then he went straight to the basket and got the layup. Exactly. <laughs> when you'd... I'll tell you, the, the, diff, the X factor for Australia right now has been Tom Wright. An illegal screen there called on Kalman Poto. And Tom Wright is just breaking up the action of Bezant and Roger. Not allowing them to have their way, Australia squeak their way back in front thanks to the two-point shooting of Dan Johnson. Here is Johnson. Thought about the two. Inside. Three seconds. Higher. Great defense. Disagrees. Seen quite a few three-second calls, both the running game and the wheelchair game in these first couple of days. And this is something the players have to adjust to. The referees are making the call, so you need to adjust. It's not for the referees to change it. That's how they're going to call it. Wagstaff trying to spin past Kelman Poto, who stood his ground. Johnson cuts in. That's a strong finish from Dan Johnson. I was just reveling in Wagstaff trying to muscle his way around Kelman Poto. Kelman Poto putting the ball between his legs on the bounce pass, then gets it back, can't get the two. Dan Johnson just silky smooth going to the basket. Uh, pops it up for him. It's very well done. That wasn't easy to do for Johnson from there. It's rare you'd make a comparison between the wheelchair game and the running game. But Lee Manning for England on the wheelchair men's team is very similar effect Dan Johnson has. He catches the ball, he uses his length, and he's almost impossible to stop once he's got it in his hands. There's a famous Dan Johnson in wheelchair basketball, former Great Britain player. He was a mighty shooter. Wasn't quite as tall as this Australian player, but a mighty shooter himself. Foul called there in Australia. Keep an eye on the foul count. And you see Johnson just swooping through. Besant goes again, what pace! And lays up. 10 9. responds so quickly. And now free throws to come. Peasant there just drives through and as quick as it's in, look at that high already straight out. Now the thing is, that's the seventh foul for New Zealand. So Australia free throws the rest of the way. Every time a foul is committed, New Zealand would do well here to try to get the same advantage. Australia have got four fouls. You can actually do that. Play for drawing fouls now. Because what you're going to see is Australia are going to keep 
trying to draw fouls because they would like to win this game at the free throw line. Australia trailed by two points. They've had a run. They were down 6-4. Now they lead 12-9. So it's an 8-3 run. Winyard. Right immediately. Johnson just... Johnson. Down low. Dunks it as well. Winyard steps back for two. It falls short. Johnson immediately pounces. Right there, such dynamicism from him. Roger matches him for pace. Oh, and Wright goes over the top instead. I said, Dan Johnson's going to grab the headlines, but for me, Tom Wright has been the X factor for Australia this evening. It's a five point game here, and Australia in the ascendancy. Tom Wright using his quickness against Winyard, the pump fake and the finish. And Tom Wright barely played in the game earlier on today. And here he is now, just going to work. Australia showing their full weapon. And three second three call second on Dan Johnson. That's a fatigue one. And again, it's the same point. Johnson frustrated and frowning, but the referees have been consistent. And the one thing we say about referees around the world, whatever the form of the game, we don't care. If they are consistent, we can adapt. And that's what Australia need to do. Defensive foul called. 15-9. Well, legal screen they're called on. Kalman Poto. And that's a, in effect. Look at Dan Turnover. Johnson. Give the ball back to Australia. Now the, oh, the referee called offensive foul. Oh, indeed he has. Tired. I think it's fair to say. And he offensive has right foul, to be. No free throws in case anybody's wondering why. You only commit to defensive foul that gets you free throws. The thing about the, how punishing 3x3 is, Dan, you look at the fatigue now, the players are all starting to get tired. Hires hurt. Hires carrying an injury here. He's grimacing. 16-9. Yeah, that looks like he's pulled a groin. Besant, it doesn't go. And Hires just digging on. His teammates need to recognise that. They should probably call a timeout and get him off the floor. Because if that is a groin... TV timeout called. Greg Hyatt, concern for Australia because, of course, four in the squad. But he's yeah. carrying an injury, clearly, and you hope it's not too long-term a one. Well, you know, with a muscle strain of any description, I'm not quite sure. He's staying in the game. Once again, the refrigeration service will be called for later on. Ice bath coming. 2018 Western Australian of the Year. Youth award for his charity work, Greg Hart. Seems okay. Back in after the timeout. Let's keep an eye on his mobility through the game. Winyard tries to put it up, comes down in the possession of a player who, as you said, Martin has dominated this game. Well, Hyatt puts it down that time. Well, Greg Hyatt, he's still pulling that groin muscle. <laughs> it's not hurting his shooting touch, is it? Winyard got to take this up. Dalman Potter got to get up quick. They're trying to get the fouls drawn now, but it's almost too late in the day. See, Hyatt makes the jump shot, and he's hustling to, but look, he's just, he's just coming up a little bit short. Kalman Poto fouled in the act of shooting. Probably too late. That Once you get in under four minutes, if the lead is five points, there's no way you should lose a game. And I think Australia have got the professionalism to see this one out. Wagstaff a spin and spin again. And even if they don't score, they're running time off the clock. Bezant. Nice move by Besant. Besant and Roger. I think you see New Zealand will use this strategy as this tournament goes on. They're going to rely more on their guards. They started out today trying to go to Wynyard. The problem is for the bigs, you get tired. And there, Wynyard. That's not lazy defense, just tired defense. Not only to stay able to stay with Jesse Wagstaff, he uses the nifty little reverse layup. Australia, potentially just one basket away from closing this one out. Kelman Poto, breathing heavily, the dominator as he's known. Besant 
Come on, Poto steps out. Pass. Got to finish that with the two. Oh, ho, ho. that would have been a highlight we could have had over and over again. Right. Good hands from Australia. Come on, Poto clears up the boards. Peasant out to Kalman Poto. Good hands from him. Kalman Poto's got some nice ball handling skills for a player his size. This one between the leg with the little dump pass. That's the second time he's done that this evening. Well, it only works if you make the jump shot at the end of it. But he's drawn the foul. Now they're in the bonus as well. It's hard to see how New Zealand can see this one out and get the win. But they'll grow from this. They'll feel good about it. Come on, Poto went after he thought he was only one shot. Now he's smirking. He's realised he's got two shots to come. So he's got one more. And Australia. Not as easy as they made it against Trinidad and Tobago. And you can't read too much into it. But when England and Australia play tomorrow with a limping Greg Hire, how is that one going to go? New Zealand have a point more than they scored against England earlier. It's now 2011. Australia score one more basket. The game is done. Roger puts it up. It rattles and Johnson claims the rebound. Steps outside. It's all going. Two shots coming. Free throws surely. Jesse Wagstaff will finish this one off. This will be his first free throw of the evening. I have to say, the, the thing that hurts New Zealand as much as anything else, their two-point shooting has destroyed them. 0 from 10. Wegstaff trying to walk off the line and say game over. And smirks to himself. And there it is. Wagstaff finishes it off. Australia, impressive once more. Dan Johnson, the standout with nine points personal. But it was a team effort from the green and gold. The Australians have one over on their neighbours. New Zealand go down 21-11. In Australia, the only team in all formats of 3x3 here who are undefeated. Every time they've stepped on the floor, they've won. And they've won with some style again tonight. New Zealand, though, still trying to figure out what their best way of playing is. I think the guards of Roger and Besant will take some learning from that. But under the big lights in the Smithfield market, Australia do not disappoint. Grimace on the face of Greg Hyatt. He seems to be walking a bit slower now. But for me, Dan Johnson is the exceptional player for Australia. Look at the statistics. Both teams shooting well from one point percentage. The big difference, the rebounding. 16 rebounds for Australia. And one-on-one, -on -one, they were unstoppable. That was the thing. You've got Johnson, you had... Uh, Wagstaff, both of them doing particularly well. Not a lot of free throw shooting between the two sides. Of course, New Zealand got their, their free throws at the end of the game. Australia consistently throughout, but that 0 from 10 on two point shooting really hurt New Zealand. Well, this is how it went down. Dan Johnson had his say throughout the game again and again. Kelman Poto supported New Zealand well, but again. They only just sneak into double figures. And Australia's shooting accuracy hurt them. Johnson willing to do the hard yards for the points. Tom Wright, as Martin said, had a huge impact. Greg Hyde carrying that injury, but it didn't stop him putting the big two away. Smiling at the end, grimacing in the middle of the match. Australia are 2-0. Oh. New Zealand will be sick of the sight of England and Australia here in Birmingham because those two sit top of the pile in Pool B. New Zealand, Trinidad and Tobago, third and fourth as things stand in the men's basketball, 3x3.